Hi, I'm Nathan, and this is Thoughts from On the Road with RV for Jesus. Thanks for joining us this week. This week we're going to do something a little bit different, a little bit special. Uh, we had the opportunity to go to a um, outdoor church. It was Buckboard Ministries uh, Cowboy Church out in Apache Junction when we were out there. And so what you're first going to see is a poem by Marsha, and then you're also going to see some special music by Dakota, and then in a little bit will be uh, the message by Pastor TJ. All right, so thanks for joining with us. Cowboy Church, here we are. What has become of our worship today? Closed doors, empty seats, or drive-by ways? Is that really how we expect to be saved? Do we dare come together in worship and praise? Or is fear the new normal that consumes our days? But a miracle happened on the desert today. We found a gathering of souls not afraid to pray. Cowboys and cowgirls all gathered around and with them a following of worships. Wor worshipers abound in fellowship and joy to be sharing the love of the one who guides us from up above. The heartfelt message that echoed through this desert cathedral, what amazing view. Prayers, songs, and guitars all filled the air. Their sincerity shows just how much they care. What a blessing to experience and to share the joy of those who worship together with cowgirls and cowboys. Amen. They were hanging on to the because the sun didn't measure up Oh, get the truth of their head They laughed and fun and made them jokes So young Billy just let them blow their smoke They got down, he turned to them and said Yes, I am a gardener's son I work with my daddy till the job is done Thanks for sticking with us. Now, Pastor TJ is going to be bringing a message about
about worshiping God and how we are worshiping God. And he start, his passage of scripture is Revelation chapter number four. So I'm going to read that for you real quick here. Revelation chapter four, starting in verse number one, he says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, a, of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow around about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And around about the throne were four and twenty seats. Upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders, sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightning, and thunderings, and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which were the seven spirits of God. Therefore the throne there was a sea, oh, excuse me, and before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts, full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the fourth beast had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. They existed and were created. So there's, there's a lot of people hanging out or a lot of beings hanging out in the throne room with God and they've been there for a long time. They're going to be there for a long time. And it's these, the, the revelation that, that kind of hit me with these creatures that are hanging out in the throne, <clears throat> they have eyes all over their bodies. They have eyes, uh, some of these creatures have wings and they have eyes under their wings and on top of their wings and, and and they're standing at this throne and i'm thinking to myself okay if that was me um i couldn't turn any way to, to not look at god so there's something that the, these beings are created to gaze upon the beauty and the wonder of god and they can't stop they can't close their eyes. You know what I mean? There's eyes all over them. And then at some point, they cry out, holy, 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 you're worthy, holy. And these elders grab their crowns and they throw them at the feet of, of, this, of God at the throne. Because I, I believe that they're getting this revelation, another revelation. So they're sitting there with him and they're gazing upon him because he's worthy, because he deserves to be gazed upon. He's beautiful. He's more beautiful than anything we could ever imagine. He's more wonderful. He's more amazing. He's there's more depth to God than we could ever we could never search him out and be done. There's just always more. And I believe that these beings in the throne room are getting that revelation. And every time they get that revelation, oh whoa! They grab their crowns and like, get this thing off my head. I don't deserve this. You are worthy. You are worthy. And they fall down on the ground and cast their crowns. And that's what's going on in the throne room. It's just like, he's just like, who wants to see another side of me? And, and it's not because he is a prideful God. It's because he wants to share. He's amazing. He wants to share. He wants to open our eyes. He wants to open our hearts. And he wants us to know who he is right now. And so when we gaze upon, when we lift our eyes and our hearts in worship, and we gaze upon his beauty on the throne, I believe that he's going to share more of who he is with us. And I believe that spiritually, we get to just cast our crowns at his feet and say, no, 
you are the only one that's worth you. And uh, he says, my son is worth me. And Jesus is sitting right there at his right hand, interceding for us, which is just amazing. Like we have the best intercessor that we could ever want. The son of God is interceding. He's praying for us. He's praying for our souls. And that God would protect us and that he would carry us through. So, I brought that up because I want to I wanna play a song this morning. And uh, I just kind of, I, I was going to play it first and I thought, nah. Because then I'll just have to play it again. Um, but I really, really want to meditate and lift our eyes to to the throne room and think about this this one seated on the throne that these beings have to, to gaze upon they can't help but gaze upon him and they never get bored they never get tired and and when we're worshiping here you know day to day we've got the mundane stuff going on and, and we can kind of we can just kind of get bored and dull with things but if we really saw this one seated on the throne we would not be bored and we would we would be able to answer that question we could just say oh my gosh how boring would it be to just sit in heaven and just sing songs all the time you know because some people they, you know, that's not their thing but i i believe it's much much deeper than that and i believe that he he pours out just deep deep revelation that even for these supernatural beings am i talking too quiet okay all right cool even these supernatural beings that were, were created to be in the throne room. Because we hear, we hear what? God is an all-consuming fire. That's pretty scary. We hear that uh, Moses wanted to see God's face. He wanted to see. He said, I want to see what you look like. God said, well, I'll hide in this crack in the rock, and you could look at my shadow. But if you try to look at anything else, you're probably going to die. Because he is... It's just who he is. He doesn't want to kill us. He did the, what David had his ark, and God's presence was in the ark, right? And they were carrying it around. And David was a man after God's own heart. But David's soldier, one of his guys, Uzziah, you know, they were walking carrying this ark, and they tripped, and the ark started to stumble. And Uzziah, thinking, I'm going to stop this thing just in his own you know, natural mind, thinking this is a good idea. He touched it and vaporized it just because of the power of God. And he warns us, don't, <laughs> don't mess around with this power because it can be too much for you. Don't, don't take my name in vain kind of stuff. He's a powerful, powerful God, more powerful than all the other gods, the little G's. Little blue G gods. I think in this time, in this day, in this season, we see all kinds of crazy stuff happening. It's real easy to, to when you're seeing division all over the place, you're seeing bitterness, hatred. God says hearts will grow dark, hearts will grow cold. And, I don't know that we're in the last days, but I think we're getting closer. It's getting kind of ugly. And I think uh, we really need to be grounded in the love of God because it's really easy to get overtaken by resentment and bitterness, especially when this is kind of all this bad energy coming through the TV and everything everybody's talking about. <clears throat> and all the backbiting and all the slandering and who knows what who's telling the truth anymore they, but that's why we need discernment so bad we need to be gazing upon the one on the throne and uh, asking him for uh, direction asking him for understanding for truth and for discernment and for strength to make it through whatever we're supposed to make it through and uh, I think if if we continue to turn our hearts to the throne of God and we continue to just lay everything at the feet of, of the Lord and, uh, and ask him to carry us through because what he says in our weakness, he is strong. So 
we can embrace our weakness. It's okay. Because we're never going to be as strong as God, and He's in our corner. He actually is ravished by one glance of our eye, it says in the Song of Solomon. How crazy is that? That this one on the throne with dancing light and emerald rainbow and thunderings and lightnings and he's an all-consuming fire, he waits upon us to look up at him and one glance of our eye, he's ravished by it. Now, who, that's why these elders throw their crowns to the ground and just, I can't. You're too good, you're too amazing, and here you invite me into this wonderful love story. It's amazing. So I'm going to sing a song, and I'm sure some of you know it. It's pretty. It's been done lots, but the words are great. And uh, it's simple. It's how great is our God. Just tell me it's not. In the splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice And he wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide But it trembles at his voice Yeah, it trembles at his voice And how great is our God Sing with me How great is our God And all will see how great And how great is our God And how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great and how great is our God and age to age he stands Time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three and one, the Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb. The lion and the lamb And how great is our God Sing with me how great is our God And all will see how great And how great is our God You are the name you are the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. You are the name above all names. You are the name above all names. Is our God and 
always see how great and how great is our God. Mm. Thanks again for joining us. This has been Thoughts from On the Road with RV for Jesus. And this week we've had the privilege of bringing to you TJ, Pastor TJ, and Buckboard Ministries and their Cowboy Church from outside at Superstitious Museum in Apache Junction. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, check us out on our webpage at rvforjesus.com, and also like us on Facebook. Thanks again for joining us, and remember, when you wander, wander with a purpose.